Hi, this is Joe Macios from A-Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about how to graph line segments on the Apple Grapher. I've got the Grapher software on my dock, so I'll just click and bring it up. And I've already got a window open for us to start working with. Um, let's talk about equations and how to get them. I've never really done that in uh, great detail, so this might be a good time to talk about that. You can obviously go up to equation and new equation. Uh, there's some shortcut keys you can use as well, or a shortcut key. Uh, this symbol on the Mac is called an option, and this symbol is either called command or apple. I tend to use command, so I would call this command option N, and that's one way to do it. Uh, or actually two ways, because you can just actually just click on that right there. Uh, another way is down here they have a uh, little button that allow, gives you a shorter set of that uh, same equation menu and you can get a new equation right from there. Okay. Uh, like I said, I tend to use the uh, option command N, so let me go ahead and put that in. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just delete this old Y equals out and we're going to put in a uh, condition, uh, inequality condition for our new equation to get our line segment. So we're going to type in x is greater than negative 2 and we're going to use this and or ampersand symbol and then x is less than uh, 3 and then you type in a, a colon. Now uh, I have to thank somebody on the internet for showing me this one. I've never used the, the uh, ampersand sign before uh, to do this and I saw it there and I thought well this this would be good but then upon thinking about it I realized it's not as good as I thought it was uh, but let's go ahead I'll, I'll explain that comment in just a little bit but let's go ahead and put in the rest of the equation uh, so this is our precondition our, or our condition for our uh, the equation we're going to type in the equation now so this is y equals 2.75 uh, yeah Okay, so we get a line segment, uh, and there's it's a horizontal line because of the y equals, uh, and it's just a constant. It's at y equals 2.75. Uh, we can see that there are some issues with it, though, because for x greater than negative 2, uh, well, I don't know if you might expect it to do this or not. It's not quite going up to the negative 2 line, and uh, it's not going up to the 3 line like we have here. And uh, while I just discovered this the, while I was kind of looking at this, if I go ahead and put in less than or equal here, which is the option comma, and then hit return, better do it this time. <laughs> now it's not doing it. Okay, uh, sometimes it seems to take this and actually go over to the line, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. And you can see it's clearly not doing it here. Let me try maybe changing this and see if that will affect something. No, that's very strange. It seems to arbitrarily choose whether or not it's going to go over to that line. Most of the time it doesn't. Uh, here is x is greater than or equal to negative 2 as well, and we can see that it doesn't really change much right there. And that's going to cause us problems later on if we're trying to draw some sort of closed figure. So it's not really the thing I want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and just leave these as is, and we'll come back and compare it. Uh, let me actually jump this up to about 3.5. Okay, move it up a little bit. All right. Um, one other symbol that you would think would work uh, would be to simply, and I'm copying this equation now, putting in that new equation with the command option key and pasting in the old one after I delete out the y equals. One other thing you might think might work is actually just typing in the word and and see what happens and well here's what happens uh, syntax error doesn't know what to do with that so that won't work for us now the way I've been doing this previously instead of using the ampersand has been coming over here and clicking on this little summation symbol if you've never done that it uh, gives you the equation palette and uh, this is some of the the quick things that they I guess they've chosen to suggest are going to be used most often uh, it's kind of like a quick palette but here's the true palette and you have a various options in this here's your standard options uh, I'm not going to go over much of this some of this is really not useful for example the fraction sign and the parentheses you know these are things you can type in uh, some of this unfortunately I haven't found a shortcut key for this there probably is but it would be nice if they uh, told
told me what it was. I've tried a number of things and never did find it. So I know, I think on the newer version of Grapher, they've taken care of some of these issues. Um, on the operators, uh, we have a whole bunch of various things here. You can also get to your uh, matrices uh, in this way. Uh, we, we're going to talk about this conditional as something we can use as well in this video. And uh, if we click on the Greek, well, these are all the Greek letters that we can use. So we can use these as variables just as much as uh, the X and the Y, or I guess I, we, I should say we can use these as parameters, but you can also use them in effect with X and Y with function notation. We'll get to that later. Okay, now the symbols palette, um, it has a various symbols in it. You can use that division key if you like. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because it looks like a plus sign. Uh, I haven't used too much of this. This is set notation, uh, intersection, and union. Um, I haven't had a lot of call for that, uh, so I'm not sure what to do with those at this point. Um, but these are the two symbols that we're going to talk about here. We have a greater than, uh, sorry, greater than the um, and, A-N-D symbol. This looks like an A with a uh, missing crossbar. It's the logical and, and this is the logical or symbol. We're going to use the logical and symbol, and I didn't position my cursor previously, and that's okay because all you have to do is cut that, highlight, cut, and then you can paste. So, in fact, let me, uh, let me undo that, actually. I'm going to leave that one that didn't work for us. Come back, highlight that, and very quickly, again, we go to here, equation palette, and that and symbol. Alright, so this should work. Let's uh, go ahead and do this. I'm going to change the 3.5 to uh, 3.25. Okay. Alright, there we have it. And it looks pretty much the same as the other line. There's not a lot of difference between this and the other one. Uh, if I want to do the OR symbol, um, you might have expected that, let me just put in a new equation, that since the word AND is not going to work, neither will the word OR, and you're going to be right about that. Let's just verify that. So X is less than negative 2, or X is greater than 3, and let's do Y equals uh, 3.0, or just 3. And again, it's not happy with that. Okay, so I've already shown you the symbol that we're going to use. We're going to use X is less than negative 2, and then we're going to go get the OR symbol, the logical OR, from over here. So uh, while the ampersand sign was a good idea in general, especially if you're going to be using lines, just single line segments, if you're trying to do two line segments or do an inequality that is in the OR uh, scenario, uh, you're going to want to use this. And uh, as long as you're using this, you may want to use the AND operator, especially if you're explaining this to students. So X is greater than 3. And uh, we're going to go y equals uh, yeah, 3, let's go 2.75. All right. And so, again, uh, a little bit more pronounced. We have issues with uh, getting this actually to negative 2 and to 3. Let's see if we have the same issues with the less than or greater than. Uh, all right. And let's go ahead and change that to a greater than or equal to. Okay. And no difference. Okay. Uh, so this is part of the problem with these types of conditionals is they, they can sometimes actually be pretty far away from the value uh, that they're supposed to go to. And, um, and I'm not quite sure why that, that problem is a problem. Maybe they fixed it on the newer version of Grapher. I'm not sure. For those that are interested in uh, what version of Grapher I'm using, let's see. Um, that's the wrong thing about Grapher. Here we go. This is just the first one that they used on the Max, the 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, 2005, it's a little old. Uh, what are we on, 2013? So that's about eight years, something like that. Um, and they've definitely updated this, although uh, I haven't done that to my computer. So we're stuck with what we've got here. All right. Well, this is all one type of uh, way of drawing line segments. Uh, there's a whole other way to do it. And uh, I had sort of indicated that earlier. So let's now use, in fact, y equals, uh, and we're going to do about 2.5 with this. And let's 
Let's see, I can't remember if you do the conditional first or, well, I guess we're going to find out. So go back to that equation palette. Uh, this time we're going to go to operators and then we're going to click on this condition statement. And you can put in the number of conditions. For example, what you're looking at here is three separate conditions. Uh, for us, we're just going to use one condition because we're just trying to draw a single line segment. And uh, it looks like that's exactly what we wanted to do. All right. So we're going to, actually, the 2.5 is what has to be right here. So this is our 2.5. Now you can put some spaces in here uh, just to tailor it to whatever spacing you'd like. And uh, we can go ahead and type in the, the same type of thing that we typed in earlier. We can say x is greater than negative 2. And I'm going to use the ampersand since this is going to be a little quicker. And then x is less than 3. Okay, so uh, again, this is a, a two-part conditional, and let's see what we get. Now, you'll notice that this one's a little bit nicer. It goes all the way up to 3 and uh, all the way up to negative 2 on the other side, and so this is a little bit better, but notice it's probably not what you would expect because it doesn't have the equal signs on it. You might expect it to fall a little bit short, but then again, if you think about it, how short do you have to fall to be you know, satisfying these conditions? and still show it. Um, theoretically, you would expect them really to go up to uh, the line, and you shouldn't be able to tell the difference between the greater than or equal or the greater than and vice versa with the less than or less than or equal. All right. So we've covered the, that type of conditional. The, the next one is the one that I use more often. I do use this, this type of conditional quite often uh, when I'm dealing with uh, one single line that I want to do multiple things, especially like animations and and I hope to show you a few videos in the future where, where I will use that. But uh, for just drawing a, a simple line segment, I actually go back to something that's a little bit easier to get a hold of, and that is, is because it's right here, new equation from template. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Uh, again, it's parametric curve, Cartesian curve. Now, I know some of you won't be very comfortable using this, but... After a little while, you use it a few times, believe me, you'll, you'll get used to how this works. I've been using this to, to uh, graph points for you in previous videos, uh, but now we're going to actually talk a little bit about, not a whole lot, but a little bit about the parameterization. I'm not a big fan of them not having spaces before and after the equal sign, so I typically will put those in. You can do it if you want to or not. Uh, the T is going to be, well, anything we want it to be in general, uh, but to make it simple, we're, we're just going to make it go from negative 2 to 3. So that'll actually make it very, very simple. So negative 2 to 3. And then what we're going to do is we want that to be the thing that's varying in the x direction. So we're going to come over here and click on the, the x equal part. Uh, this corresponds to the same variable here. And we want that to be the t. Now, on the other hand, the y, we want that to be, well, the straight horizontal line portion of this. Uh, let me put in 2.25 for this particular value and uh, just hit return, and there it is. Uh, you'll notice it's every bit as consistent as this conditional one was, and um, it had the advantage of not necessarily having to go to the equation palette to get, uh, well, if I was going to do the ampersand sign, I guess it's not that much different, but uh, you know, to me it just seems a little more quicker, and I, I use it a little bit more. All right, uh, there's other one other notation I want to show you that doesn't work, and uh, that you might be tempted to use. I've tried to use it when I was trying to figure out things. You might think, especially based on this notation, that you should be able to do something like x is equal to two, dot dot dot, uh, three. Uh, colon, and then say something like y equals, uh, what would it be? Let's go to 2, and let's see what happens. Well, it doesn't like it. Uh, the other possibility is you might come up with another thing like y equals, let's do 1.75, and maybe a comma, because they're, they're using a comma right here, so maybe that's what it would be. And then you can just use x is equal to negative 2 dot 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 to 3, and, well, you can see it gave you a line, but it did it by ignoring all of this. So it certainly didn't give us the line segment. So 
uh, these these two other methods won't work very well for us. So uh, as I said, this is my favorite. This is what I like to use, and uh, you could optionally do it this way as well. Uh, you can do these others, but you'll end up with problems. So let me show you an example where uh, this method or this method would work much better for us. Uh, I've got that video, or sorry, that uh, graph underneath here. Let me just click on there. And this is a simple box and whisker plot. Now, uh, I haven't seen very much software, certainly free software, that'll do a box and whisker plot. So I did this about a year ago, maybe two years ago, and um, basically have been having my, my students, when they're, they're learning this, start to play with the uh, Apple Grapher uh, just to get used to this type of thing. And almost all of them don't remember how to do this from year to year. You have to re-show them how to do this. I do have one student that uh, really good and remembers all of this stuff and just, just loves playing with this Apple Grapher. Uh, but um, you can see what would happen if there were gaps in these uh, from, let's say, right here and right here. And I've actually done uh, a study with uh, one student where I showed him uh, the equations that wouldn't work and the equations that did work. And, and I'm not going to go over that because we're running low on time. Uh, just very briefly, I want to show you how I did this. Um, this is going to involve uh, statistics, of course. Uh, you'll recognize the Q1, Q2, Q3. Those are the typical things, uh, uh, the 25% quartile, the 50% uh, quartile, and 75% quartile. I've defined the min to be Q0 and the max to be Q4. I don't know why they don't use that in statistics texts, but uh, it would seem like that's what they were setting it up for, and it works really well when you use it, so that's what I do. Um, this L is basically a way to judge how far away we're going to be, or well, it's actually the range of the data, but it's going to tell us about how big it is for the window that we're going to want, and I actually use it... Um, in uh, deciding uh, where to put this, basically, is what it amounts to. Uh, the H uh, is equal to uh, Q over 4, or Q over 10, just basically, again, just to get it off of the x-axis so we can read the numbers easily, and yet not put it too far away. Um, all right, let's go look at some of these other things. So this is just setting up all the parameters. Uh, you can see H is used in these. And what are these? Well, if I click off here, you'll know right, real quick. Watch the diagram as I turn off those equations. It's the horizontal lines. So I just put these all in one little folder. Uh, the reason it's untitled is because in this particular version of Grapher, uh, no matter what you do to try to get into that double click or whatever it is, it won't let you change untitled group. And I, I did play with the newer one, and it they solved that problem now. So... Um, again, if you got the chance to use the newer one, I would. Uh, here again, we're using H, but notice we're using it in a different place here. I guess let's compare them both. Here, the H was inside the formula, whereas over here, the H's are in the conditional, okay, or the parameterization, if you will. And these, of course, will control the vertical lines, all right? And uh, this is our conditional. This should look a little familiar to you now. Uh, when you don't put in something, for example, if you type in, uh, let's say, x equals 100, and that gives you a line, you would expect that. But if you type in x is less than 100, okay, it's going to give you a region like that. So by applying, let me get rid of that, by applying... Uh, a number of these regions with the AND symbol, um, and basically I've got four conditions here. X is greater than Q1, X is less than Q3, Y is greater than 1.5H, and Y is less than 2.5H. So there's four terms here, and they're each separated by an AND symbol. So that requires that they shade, all four shade the same region, and that's this little box. So that's about it for uh, graphing um, line segments on the Apple Grapher. There may be, <laughs> uh, I don't know, three or four other ways to do it that I haven't come upon yet. If you've got one, uh, you might want to do your own video and you know let me know about it. And uh, maybe later if I redo this, we'll include it. But that's all I'm going to tell you about today. I think that should satisfy quite a lot of you out there. 
And uh, let's jump over to our final screen. Again, we were learning how to graph line segments on the Apple Grapher. Uh, th this is uh, A Tutoring Enterprises, my little business, my tutoring business. My name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent.com. My email is at tutent at nebraskaneb.rr.com. And you can call me at 402-421-3536. I tutor both online, um, which basically caters to anybody in the world, and uh, locally to uh, people in Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, check out my website. You'll see my rates and all that good information there. And if you need some help, uh, give me a call. Uh, I'm going to come down to a little white screen now. And hopefully on this white screen now, you're seeing all kinds of little... Uh, 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 links coming up to some of the other videos I've done on the how-to. Um, feel free to check out the other videos. If you like this video, please like it. Uh, if you feel like sticking in your favorites, go ahead and do that. But um, I guess it's probably not a favorite, just something you might want to keep in one of your playlists. Uh, especially if you're a teacher or something like that, you might want to keep this handy so that uh, you can reference it when you want to help your students. Well, thanks for uh, watching the video, and uh, check out some of the others, and uh, have a great day.